Hello, it's Kristen Atkins here from Impressing Minds, and today I'm going to talk to you about being a professional foster parent and the reason that um, I want to say professional is that um, in the past, say since the 70s, 80s, before there were a lot of regulations and rules for foster parents and a lot of scrutiny. Foster parents had such a bad rap. Um, there was a lot of stories of abuse and neglect from the foster family uh, that was supposed to be taking care of the children. Um, so in the past, they would be rescued from one home and be put into a foster home only to be, you know, abused further or in different ways. So because of that, I think that now we're having to kind of still fight for our professionalism, so to speak, and to be heard and to get past some of those stereotypes. For example, I know that I have been accused of you know, doing it for the money. Um, one friend of mine told another friend, do you know how much money she makes? And my, my real friend said, do you know how good of care she takes of those children? And, you know, they're all in church and they're all doing this and that. And, you know, she couldn't even imagine that my friend was accusing me, my friend was accusing me of doing it for money's sake. You know, um, I'll probably do a whole video or blog post all about the amount of money it takes to rear a child. Um, but anyway, there are some instances where in the past uh, foster parents have gotten a really bad rap for being abusive. Um, I have one book here, it's called Girl Unbroken, and it's from probably the 80s, uh, and this girl, Regina and Rosie, they were sisters, and there was like five siblings, and they went through some horrific, horrific times with their biological mother. But anyway, Rosie and Regina also were put in foster care. Regina was older, and she was in a good home, but Rosie was young, and she and her brother were put into foster care. And so the the story that she tells while she was in foster care is just unbelievable. The things that those foster parents, respectable foster parents, um, were, you know, were making them, them do. Um, you just have to read the book. It's amazing and um, unbelievable at the same time. So, you know, I've read this book. I've read the first book. And so it gives you a glimpse into the foster care system around the, the 1980s. Uh, another book that I read, and this book is by Ashley Rhodes Quarter. She writes about her experiences after she becomes an adult. She writes about her experiences in foster care. And she, along with a group of other foster children, actually sues a foster family, um, husband and wife, for their treatment. So they were pretty much abused as children. And... You know, they went to turn them in or complain. Maybe, um, you know, they were telling these people are doing this to me. These people are being abusive. And the the social worker, the CPS worker would come out and, and say, well, is this true? Right in front of the, the foster parents. And so, of course, they did not. When the CPS workers left and things, they were in trouble. So they were constantly getting in trouble. And so it's a really good book. And I highly recommend that one as well. So you can see the realities of the foster care system. And that one was probably in the, the 90s. So not too far off. So we have a long way to go. Um, 
you know, there are a lot of physical abuses, but also there's lots of psychological abuse. There's a lot of things that go on that you really don't know about. Um, and so when people say, well, I do foster care, you really do wonder, are they doing it for the right reason? Do they really love these children? Are they, um, you know, doing everything they can to and be inclusive? Um, you just don't know. So my goal is to, you know, help us have a better uh, experience and to be looked at with better eyes professionally almost. Um, there is one example that I have of a little foster family who had a little girl and she stayed there about seven years and then um, she found out she had a, an, another family, a biological family, and she had to go stay with them. And she was heartbroken because that was the saddest day of her life because she had to leave her foster family. So obviously that was a really good family. And so that's what we, we wanted to, um, we want to kind of get those stories out there and that kind of um, mentality that foster families are good families and get the stories out there that, that are uplifting. And then we want to help encourage the families who are struggling, perhaps. Foster care is not an easy task. It's not an easy job, you know. So I really want to get past the idea that we are abusive or money-hungry, self-serving adults. We want to be more professional. And we foster for the right reasons. We have a passion for helping underprivileged children in this time of need. Um, we want to be a good parental figure. Um, so I want to get rid of some of those stereotypes. And in looking forward, I wanted to see how I could help foster families be better, be good, be um, equipped and rested and helped and trained to actually be the kind of family that people would say, oh, you do foster care, that's wonderful. And, you know, you could be emotionally stable and, you know, we could link arms together and do, do the foster journey together. So we need to get past these negative stereotypes that we do it for money and um, that we're just having a kid here and they're in our home, but we're not emotionally present with them either. I think that probably could be um, one of the biggest things that there is today, perhaps, where maybe we're not physically abusive, but foster families may be, um, yes, you can come, here's your room, you can stay in that room, you know, kind of don't bother me mentality, I think, especially a few stories that I've read, especially older people when they're doing foster care or grandparents, you know, it's hard to be emotionally available all the time for kids, especially kids who have had traumatic experiences. So we need to be, you know, on top of our game when we do fostering. We need to foster for the right reasons to, you know, get these kids back on track and keep them um, you know, thriving. We want to try to get them to thrive and be successful. So how can we do that? There are a few things that we need to do as foster parents. First of all, is educate ourselves. Um, we need to educate ourselves in various aspects. So not only in like child development, psychology, things like that, um, but also in trauma. And these children aren't, aren't, being raised normally. Um, so, you know, we need to read up on some books. There's a plethora of books on subjects such as uh, psychological problems, mental disorders, reactive attachment disorder, things like that, that we could be reading. And some of the books are lengthy. Some of them are written for, you know, medical professionals, mental health professionals. But we can we could do our part to kind of research some of the problems that we're having maybe with specific children in our home. So you don't have to read all the books, 
just when you have a problem, maybe you read up on it. You can definitely do some online research. That's what I'm hoping to provide, some kind of support, an online forum for um, reactive attachment disorder, because that's very dear to my heart. Um, also, when you do online research, you can put in scholarly articles after your Google search or Bing search or whatever you're using, scholarly articles, and then more uh, research articles will appear, not just um, like blog posts or things like that. Don't forget about your medical professionals. When you take your children for their visits, therapy, this, that, and the other, you can ask them, where can I research about this problem? And can you tell me a little bit more about it so I can parent better? So I just want to encourage you to do some research on your own. Uh, reach out to other people who are fostering. Maybe they've had these same situations and um, this particular problem that this particular child is having and kind of educate yourself. That's one thing we can do. In our next video, in my next video, I am going to talk about support and getting support for yourself so you can be mentally capable of doing this. You know, it's, it's a thankless job that doesn't, um, doesn't pay anything really nearly enough to, to sacrifice what you're sacrificing. You know, um, I say all the time, who would who would willingly put their self through an increased amount of stress and drama and emotional roller coaster, you know, for, for this. You have to have the right heart. You have to have the right intention. Uh, you couldn't do it. It's, it's a stressful situation. And you might even take it out on the kids if your heart isn't right. And that's what we want to avoid. Um, so we really want to help you out and impress value on these children. Please like and subscribe um, to the channel. And I hope to see you next time for getting support. We're going to talk about getting support. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. And please keep impressing value.